Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. Now here's your host, Courtney Boggs. but we are very happy to be back finally after a three week break here with you guys tonight. Yes. And speaking of that youth media conference, some of the high schoolers that joined us today are actually our live studio audience. Some students from Norman High and Norman North. We also have some football players with us tonight. The man who only catches touchdowns, Mark Andrews and Norman's very own Nick Baskin. Reagan and I will debate which position will be the most improved this year for Sooner football. And later on, we'll take a look at some former Sooners who started to write their script at Pro Day. Well, it's pretty clear that spring has sprung here in Norman, Oklahoma. And what better way to enjoy the nice, warm spring weather than out at the softball field? The OU softball team had a stellar performance at the college preview tournament here in Oklahoma over the weekend. The girls swept all three days of play, leaving them with a 4-0 record for the tournament. The team started out in Norman on Friday against Mississippi State, playing on their home field for the first time in seven games. And of course, they did what they do best at home. I'm talking about winning, of course. They defeated the Bulldogs 5-3 to to bump up their home winning streak to 26 straight games. Saturday's games took place at the ASA Hall of Fame Stadium, where the Sooners took down Louisiana State and beat the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Ham. The Sooners met up with UAB again on Sunday in the finals, and the outcome was very much the same, except a whole lot sweeter. They beat the Blazers 15 to zip. Yes. And there were a few key players who really helped the team over the weekend. Reagan, who stepped up to the plate for the Sooners? Well, it was a four-game sweep, like you said, but another big weekend for junior pitcher Paige Parker. Yes. Only had only had one start, but racked up 18 total strikeouts wow. over the four-game set. Sydney Romero also had another big game, continuing her tear at the plate, adding three, uh, three multi-hit games to, uh, to her uh, total this season, and a big three-for-three three day up in the city on Saturday with the long ball for fourth of the season. Added another two-for-three day on Sunday alongside junior Kelsey Arnold, who also went two-for-three and hit her first home run since freshman year. A big weekend for the whole team, 30 runs on 33 hits, four earned runs allowed, 36 Ks in the circle, and now 27 straight home wins for this team. That is awesome. Nothing but the best. Well, Courtney, like you said, spring is back, and that means spring football is here. Words we love to hear in the state of Oklahoma. Coach Shoup said he really wants this team to continue to build on that foundation that they built on last year's season, while also looking to create more depth. This team has always had the mentality of next man up, next man up and it seems to be no different this offseason. They've got some big holes to fill with P. Ryan Mixon and Westbrook all yes, leaving, they but they have the time to do it in a huge break. Right side for this team is that the entire starting offensive line is returning, along That's with Heisman Trophy finalist quarterback Baker Mayfield. You can catch a glimpse of this year's team not this Saturday, but next April 8th in their spring game. Hey, the crowd behind us sounds pretty stoked about spring football, but I feel like that's pretty much the consensus. People are excited to see what the young guns are going to do coming going into next season. So that's exciting, but. We're not talking about the future, we're talking about the present, and the OU baseball team has had a great season yeah. so far. It's the one we've been waiting for for a while. They started conference play over the weekend. Reagan, tell me more. Talk about them every week, but man, they're just killing it right now. I don't know, I know. I don't know what to do. Started a Big 12 play this weekend down in Waco, and they continue to roll as the number 10 team in the nation. The Sooners took two of three from the Baylor Bears. Friday's opener and in a big 11-3 blowout over the Bears, highlighted by two big bombs from Steel Walker and Blake Brewster. Saturday, however, was not one to remember. The Sooners fell 7-0, but in the rubber match on Sunday, the Sooners came out. Junior, Kyle Mendenhall, three-run bomb, 3-0 in the second inning, kept the score, won the series, 2-1. Big weekend for the Sooners. The team just continues to roll, 22 hits, 14 runs, nine earned runs, and now 23-5 on the season. But they have a big weekend ahead of them as those guys from down in Lubbock head to Norman as Zuners take on Texas Tech in a three-game series 
this weekend. All right. Well, switching gears to basketball, unfortunately, the Sooners will not be heading to Phoenix and to repeat another Final Four, but head coach Next Long year. Kruger will be there accepting the National Association of Basketball Coaches Metropolitan Award. The award is given to a coach for their long and outstanding service to men's college basketball. Can't think of a more perfect recipient. Coach Kruger has had a historic coaching career, as most of us know, including being the first Division I coach to take five different colleges to the NCAA tournament. And I know we all remember last year's Final Four. What makes it even sweeter is Coach Kruger's son is presenting him with that, the award. This, yes, in Phoenix it is going that. to be great. Congratulations, Coach. Great father -son Standout moment. coach, class act guy. It's a very well-deserved honor. When we come back, we'll be talking more baseball. And of course, we just can't get enough of spring football. So we'll be talking about that too. Stay with us. <laughs> So here we go. Which Showtime. position group do you think will improve the most this next season? This is a good question. I'm pretty hopeful about the cornerback position this year. Last year, the Sooners kind of struggled to find that one right man to stick in one of those positions and they switched between several different players over the course of the season but they were very optimistic in their recruiting class this year coach Stoops said it's one of the best he's seen in a long time yes, it is. yes so i think guys like trey brown could really help out those defensive backs and jordan parker and jordan thomas are both a returning great season last year. They, yes they both had great seasons last year they no doubt room for improvement there as well so i think it's going to be really good for i them. think jordan parker yeah. is the key to this defense oppo i'm excited JT. See it. Well, I'm going to have to go with the guys Baker will be throwing to, the receivers. Now, I don't think we need to improve that much. Not, okay, not, not improve, but there's a, a lot of depth in this position that I see these guys are going to be fun to watch for. You know, you lost D.D. Westbrook last year, or T.D. Westbrook as we know him best, but he was the main target. But now you have guys like Nick Basquin showing up, who had a great, great season last year in the latter half of the season. Along with that, you have guys like Jeff Mead and the big man, the guy who catches touchdowns, Mark Andrews. A big target for Baker. Along with that, Dahi Green and A.D. Miller. But I'm telling you what, I'm excited to watch Marquise Brown, all 157 pounds yeah. of that guy. The electric, the speed, the quickness will be key for that fast-paced offense that Lincoln Riley puts out. I see you playing to the crowd. Okay. Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. Of see. course. We definitely have two guys I got in our them. audience right now. We need to keep your eye on them. They're going to be good this next season. Okay, I'm here with Jake from Norman North High School, and he has an audience question for you guys. How far do you think our baseball team will go this season? Uh, this is Okay, this is really good. This is tough, too, though, because there's a lot of season left to play. But I think the Sooners have a really great chance to go far in the NCAA tournament. Right now, this team is playing so well. They are scoring a ton of runs per game and pulling out some really impressive wins, including the series sweep against Baylor. And they're doing it in a very tough conference this year. But I think they've got the potential to go really far. It's been a little while since we've seen a Sooner baseball team start this strong and, and do so well. So I'm excited about that. And they've got a long way to go, but I definitely believe in this squad. Well, this is a very, very tough question because I want to be optimistic about this team. I like this squad a lot. But the problem is they play in the toughest conference, I swear, I in all of baseball, and that's the Big 12. You got TCU, you got Texas Tech, you got Texas. You got all these teams on your schedule, Oklahoma State too, it makes it tough. They have their hands full. But I'll tell you what, if anybody can get it done, it's this group. They're on fire right now, 23-5. and five. I see them getting to the regional round of the, of the NCAA tournament. Maybe not the Super Regionals this year, but I see the regional round. I think all that youth is going to be back for next year, and they'll make a run. Since 2010 was the last time they made it to the College World Series, so they're due. They are. All right. Well, it's now time for my favorite part of the day. We've been off for three weeks. I've really I'm been missing this. this. Viral videos. Woo! I'm excited to see what you guys brought to the table tonight. Okay, so my, mine's pretty good, I feel like. Shout out to executive producer Justin Strain for showing this to me. An Atlanta Hawks fan, okay, shoots his dunk. Pretty legit, right? But the best part is his celebration dance. I guess you know it. Yeah, he is getting down. Like, I've never seen so someone so excited about making a dunk. Like, that is like a, t a touchdown dance for basketball, I guess you could say. 
All right, well, I chose <laughs> this next video probably because this is m me as a kid, and I'm kind of embarrassed by it, but I don't really care. There's diehard fans, and there's little kids like this who take pregame rituals to a whole new level in honor of the Tar Heels back to the final four. <laughs> Take that shirt off. Get it off. He's game day ready. Aww. Throw it out there. Throw it out there. That's yes. He's pumped. That was totally me as a kid in front of the TV. Watching my Sooners games, my little the football and stuff. All right. It's oh, now well. time for our voting process. The audience is going to cheer for who they think won the face-off challenge. Give it up if you think it was Blakely. <laughs> Okay, okay, now cheer if you think it was Reagan. Yeah. Reagan brought his A game tonight. He takes home the win again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right, well, when we come back, we'll be talking about OU Pro Day and what the future holds for some Sooners. Stay with us. Special thanks to our Cornerstone Television partners, Chesapeake Energy, Riverwind Resort, Anheuser-Busch, OU Outreach, and OU Medicine. Welcome back to the pad. Transitioning into the NFL is every college football player's dream. Unfortunately, when you don't get that invite to the NFL Combine, it can make your journey a little bit more difficult. Our own Carson Williams shows us how OU's Pro Day might give some uninvited players a second chance. NFL scouts from all 32 teams piled into the Everest Training Center for OU's Pro Day to catch a glimpse of some of the best talent the Sooners have to offer. 16 players were out to prove that they had what it takes to make it on an NFL roster. Um, I think it, I think it went really well. Um, definitely, uh, you know, uh, met some goals that I wanted to get today, and uh, you know, I, I live with the results, and I'm very happy with the way it did end. Hopefully, I helped it a lot. You know, um, obviously, that's for the scouts to answer. Uh, hopefully, I impressed the scouts. But like I said, I'm very confident in what I did, and so, you know, I'm looking forward to see what happens next for me. For some, pro day marks the end of one era and the hopeful beginning of another. Those players not invited to the highly touted NFL Combine use their Pro Day as a one-shot take-it-or-leave-it showcase to NFL scouts. It definitely was kind of bitter in my in the taste of my mouth when I didn't get invited. I mean, I understood. I wasn't going to hang my head too low over it. I was going to use it for motivation, uh, you know, because I'm very competitive. And I just want to compete against some of the best guys in the nation. And, you know, when I didn't get that invite, uh, I just know how to write my story a little bit differently. Uh, you know, it just puts a chip on your shoulder. Uh, you know, not going to the combine, you know you have to work harder, you have to work a little harder. So, you know, for me, I always work hard, I'm always going to work hard, and I just thank God for the opportunities that he gave me, that he gave me. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, all the coaches and things, there were so many scouts here today, and uh, this was just like a, a combine. So, uh, you know, I was happy with just having an opportunity. With one month to go until the NFL draft, Pro Day was likely the players' last chance to showcase their on-field talents to NFL scouts. They've seen what they can do on film, but watching them in person is a completely different story. There's nothing left to do now, but wait. You know, I'm enjoying my last couple months here. Uh, I'm going to keep training and stay in shape. Uh, I want to, you know, hopefully go into these OTAs and camps, you know, one step ahead of everybody. But definitely enjoy my last couple months here with my family, um, close friends. Because, you know, they, they, they really got me here. Um, I, I want to be here without them, but yeah, and, uh, just, you know, let God take care of everything else. Oklahoma has had a handful of high draft picks, but they've also had a number of guys go undrafted who have carved their way onto an NFL roster. The point is, everyone writes their own book differently. These guys are just hoping their next chapter can be titled NFL Draft. Carson Williams, Sooner Sports Pad. Football, give it up for Nick Basquin and Mark Andrews. Thank you guys for being here tonight. So we talked a little bit about in the show, spring football getting back into action. What does that feel like for you guys to be back on the field? 
Oh, that's awesome. You know, whenever you get the chance to go back out there and you know do what you love, it's um, it's a great feeling to to be able to do that and, and and get back in the swing of things. Like Mark said, it's a something we want to do. So it's not really a job. It's what we want to do, and it's good to get back out there and get ready for next season. You lost a lot of offensive weapons, obviously, on this team, but you have a lot of guys to fill those roles. Does this team really just follow that, you know, next man up motto? Definitely. Uh, the coaches preach that to us, next man up. So it's just our turn and other guys that you haven't even mentioned yet. So that's the biggest thing, next man up. And um, you guys, how important is it for five of those offensive linemen to be coming back to kind of help that offense? Oh, that's huge, especially for us. You know, that's where, that's where all the work gets done. Um, those guys are so important um, to every team, and w especially what we're trying to do. And um, so for for us to have that, you know, kind of you know maturity and and the veterans coming back, so um, it's going to be big for us uh, moving forward. I saw Marquise Brown at practice last week, and he's he's fast. What <laughs> impresses you most about him besides that? I mean, he's so fast, but he also <laughs> <laughs> that's not the only thing to his game. I mean, he has good hands, he has good routes, so. He'll, he'll definitely have an impact this season. Yeah, he's you know incredibly fast, but you know he's a, he's a baller. You know he, he makes the plays, and um, so he he he's very aggressive. And besides the speed, he's he's a he's a great you know with his hands. Is he faster than Didi? Uh, it's 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 different. Uh, I, I'd say he'd probably <laughs> run a fast, faster forty, but maybe. Wow. Uh, Game speed is a little different. Yeah. So. That's crazy. Well, um, w with losing Didi Westbrook, what, how has your guys' roles kind of changed, or it, have they changed? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there, with you know someone like that that caught so many balls for for our offense, uh, there's guys that got to step up, and you know Nick and I, uh, being veterans coming back for our fourth year, it's gonna it's gonna be huge for us to be able to lead um, and then take that leadership role and then uh, make the big plays and, and step up for next year. Definitely, and I also think that the uh, offense will be more balanced. I think we'll not be so pass laden. Uh, I think we'll run the ball really well this year. Speaking of a vet, Baker announced early last year that he's coming back because he came here for one reason, that's to win a national title. What does that show about his leadership on this football team? Shows he truly cares about this university, this team, his teammates, everybody that's involved with the football program. That That's our main goal is to win a national championship. Yeah. 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 And what for you guys, just getting out in this spring, spring game, it's great for fans, but what's the best part about it for you guys? Uh, just the atmosphere, you know, there's, there's usually 40,000 people or something like that. So it's awesome to be able to get out there and kind of have that, you know, game-like experience and just, and just feel it all out. And um, it's kind of the first time you get back in the swing of things with the whole game-like atmosphere. So it's, it's nice to be able to, to have that for the season. Also the fans, I mean, interacting with the fans. We're out here grinding by ourselves. It gives us something like to enjoy because we know those people enjoy it too. Well, you're known as the man who just catches touchdowns. What's the secret, man? Uh, you They're always open. I don't know what it is. <laughs> just, coach just put me in the right spot, and, and Baker put it on me. Hey, All there right. you go. Whoa. There we go. Courtney has an audience question for you guys. Yes, yeah, so I'm here with the lovely Lee Reynolds, one of our favorite oh. ladies Woo! here in Gaylord. Yeah. <laughs> and she has a question for both of you. What's your favorite memory from last season? Great question. Ooh. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the whole season after Ohio State because everybody was down on us after a one and two start and then we won nine straight, won the yeah. Big 12 championship. Yeah. Uh, I'd say for me, it's probably the same thing, just our team coming together after that. You know, we had a meeting, you know, just coming together after those two losses. Um, it was kind of hard for us, you know, being Oklahoma, kind of, you know, taking those two losses. But just everything throughout the year and then the final bowl game, um, the Sugar Bowl, it beat Auburn. Um, yeah. so, yeah, so, so that was a great experience for us, and that, that was very memorable for me. All right, thanks so much, guys. When we come back, we're playing dynamic duos. <laughs> Just let me throw that in there. Okay, I asked him a series of questions before the show. You're gonna tell me what he answered. Sound good? Okay. Question number one. What is Nick's favorite thing to do after practice? Is it A, go for a recovery jog, B, watch Netflix, C, rest, or D, do homework? Um, rest, for sure. Rest. C, rest. Yeah, easy. 
Okay, that was our warm up question. That was our warm up question. Okay, question number two. What is Nick's best dance move in the locker room? Is it A, the dab, B, hits, C, the running man, or D, stanky leg? What do you guys think? Um, I'm gonna go with the dab. Is it the dab? Oh no! You have to show us what that is. Yeah, what is, what is hit? Come on. Come on, let's see it. Let's see it. There we go. Okay, okay. Question number three. Who is Nick's favorite wide receiver in the NFL? Is it A, Odell Beckham Jr., B, Julio Jones, C, Des Bryant, or D, Antonio Brown? Well, I sit next to him in class all the time, and I've always seen him watch films on Antonio Brown. Wait, he's not doing That is dedication to the game right there. Dedication to the game. All right, question number four. Where would Nick take a girl on a first date? I know we're getting all personal up in here. Is it A, Chili's, B, Charleston's, C, Ted's, or D, Taco Bell? Oh. I'm going I'm to go with uh, Charleston's. Charleston's? That's a nice one. There we go. There we go. We are doing pretty well, guys. I'm impressed. Okay, I have one final question. Very, very serious, important question. Audience, you're gonna need to, yeah, to help me out on this one. What is Nick's favorite high school mascot? Is it A, the Eagles, B, the Timberwolves, or C, C, the Tigers, or D, the Dragons? What is it? What is it? It's gotta be me. It's easily the Timberwolves. Timberwolves? Yeah! He got it. There we go. He got it. All right, good job, guys. Very impressive. Thank you guys.